time and I was just exploring and the water's coming up close. Uh Good morning everyone, this is John. I'm in Laguna Beach. Uh, I'm at a spot I've never actually really been to before except for last week. I found it on a fluke uh, in, through a private neighborhood um, with a public access point. Um, I've driven by it many times but I noticed a sign that says public access but there's a gate. But then finally I noticed there's a small door you can just walk right through. So there's that. Um, Laguna Beach has a lot of cool beaches but uh, there's a few that are like really beautiful that are blocked up by private neighborhoods and the only way to get to them is you know scuba gear or a boat uh, neither of which I have and, um, anyway so finding this one it's, I was like all right and I found this uh, rock formation um, that I really wanted to photograph but it was really low tide and I thought it would look better with you know water around it um, so I saw this morning it was a high tide it was supposed to be overcast so I slept in just a little bit thinking uh, no need to get up for the sunrise, thinking, uh, you know, there wouldn't be sunlight. But of course, I, on the way here, I saw pink skies, awesome, awesome clouds, you know, most beautiful sunrise. And of course, I missed it by the time I got here because, you know, I misread the weather report. Go figure. Anyway, uh, the rock formation is actually behind me. Uh, I want to photograph, or him to photograph. But I saw with the high tide, um, there's this uh, rock formation with the hotel or apartments above it. It just looks really cool with the waves crashing on it. So I thought I'd start with that. So I'm set up with the 70 to 200. I'm actually going to try to get closer. I mean, there's a lady walking around with her dog. Close her up, so I think it's safe for her and safe for me. We'll see. So, uh, anyway, I'm set up with the 70 to 200. Just waiting for big waves. Uh, I put the ISO higher so I can get a faster shutter speed, all of that good stuff. So I'm going to try to get closer, maybe get more definition of the wave. Uh, I'm closer because I'm shooting through a little bit of mist from the waves that are closer to me. So I want to capture more detail. So as I'm getting closer, I'm trying to decide how close to get because uh, the waves will come up. I don't want to get wet, and especially I don't want to get my camera wet. So I'm debating on how close to get. Uh, and it's funny, getting closer, uh, I'm able to hide the, I'm noticing I'm able to hide the house or apartment center above. Um, I'm not really wanting to show that. I 
like to show like the raw nature, not just the building. But it looks cool with the building, don't get me wrong. I think it'd be a great view to live up there, but there you go. So one thing I'm trying that's different for me, um, normally I just do a high shutter speed to capture the power. Um, I was getting bored and I put the neutral density filter on to do like a four second, two second. And it just didn't, didn't look right to the situation. And it could be right for another situation. I don't know. It comes down to taste. But um, one thing I noticed, um, if I went to a shutter speed of like a fifteenth of a second, um, it creates more movement. And uh, it just looks interesting. So I put it to F11, ISO 100, and uh, I set up the remote so I don't get any shake. So I want to have the rock in focus and have this like movement uh, of blur, not just crispness. So I think it gives a little more dynamic. What do you think? So something else I'm trying is something called panning where you follow an object with a slower shutter speed. Wave, water, snow. So with panning you have a slower shutter speed and you follow an object you know, uh, horizontally. Moving for the water. So take three. So painting, you follow an object with a slower shutter speed, and the object, um, with slower shutter speed, I mean like, let's say a 50th of a second, or depending on how fast it's moving, maybe 20th of a second, or 90th of a second. The idea is that you're following it, so when you're keeping in pace with it, the object will be in focus, but the background gets blurry. So I'm just giving it a shot. I, just, I thought, what the heck. It looks really cool with like race cars, uh, people running, you know, that kind of thing. Sometimes when you want to show something fast, but it you photograph it frozen, it just looks like it's parked or standing there. And it have the idea of motion, uh, I think, creates a huge dynamic. I'm not doing a very good example of it this morning. Maybe if we had a server. I was talking about painting and I was trying with waves and just the position I was at it just wasn't working at least what I had in mind and since I was talking about uh, surfers as an example or surfing uh, I'm nearby Huntington Beach so here I am Huntington Beach um, so I'm set up on the shore um, I'm gonna be shooting parallel to the surfers a lot of times when I photograph surfing um, it's actually been a while um, there was a couple years when that's kind of all I was doing this lens isn't exactly the best for surfing, in my opinion. Um, if the surfers are kind of far out, if you want to be like kind of close in on the action, uh, this only zooms to 200, so it's still a little far. But it gives you a sense of the size of the wave, uh, pier, that kind of thing. Um, also prefer to photograph on the pier just to be closer. But this this will make the example. So I'm set up at. Uh, um, I'll start at 50 in a second. What, you, what ends up happening, you have to open up the shutter, make a slower shutter speed, uh, have a smaller aperture. So I put it on rapid. Uh, you can put it on servo uh, for the autofocus mode, but uh, it's so far out, it, the focus isn't gonna change that much. So I'm just gonna wait for a surfer. I moved up onto the pier because um, with this 200 millimeter lens, even at the edge of the sand, as close as I can get to the water, I'm still too far, I'm still too far out from the, the surfers. Because what happens is if I'm close to something, you know, a little bit of movement is large movement in, in relation to the camera. So if I back up, you know, further back, the same amount of movement is minimized. Um, so what happens 
lenses, even at 200 millimeters, to capture that moon base, it's so minuscule, I'm moving past the object. So what happens is everything gets, becomes a little blurry, and I don't want that. So I move closer. So hopefully I can move parallel with the surfers as they go um, towards the shore. Um, so it's a tricky thing because uh, hopefully they're going that way and not just away from me or at me, if that makes sense. Because if they're moving at me, um, I can't move with them. So they're changing, they'll, they'll still be blurry. So it's a tricky thing, but once, uh, once you get it locked in and everything works right, you know, it's a great effect. Well, that's it for this video. Uh, my parking meter is actually running out, so I got to get back. Um, as always, if you have any comments or questions, leave them down below. Uh, I'll see you next time. Bye.